Welcome to the call. Welcome to the call, all millionaires. My name is Alma Nancy, and I'm your host this evening. Thank you all so very much for calling in. We truly appreciate it. And I'd like to welcome you all to this self-esteem development training call, Obsessed with Success. Just in case this is your first time calling in, I'd like to be the first person to inform you that we do have these calls each and every Wednesday, and they are always filled with strategies and tips on self-esteem development, entrepreneurship, as well as secrets of the super wealthy. Now, I've personally been listening to these calls for about a year now, and they have honestly changed my life. I have the honor and the privilege to introduce Mr. Hazik Ali. Mr. Ali helps people for a living, and he also loves giving back and providing service. Mr. Ali has so much knowledge and wisdom with an uncanny level of awareness. Because of this, we affectionately call him the wizard. Mr. Ali is a self-esteem uh, development coach, an author, and my personal mentor. Now, coming right up is Mr. Hazik Ali. Are you on the line, sir? Yes, I am, Ms. Nancy, and thank you so much for everything you do, all the ideas you bring to the table, and all the love that you bring to our organization and our businesses and our mission, which if anybody on the line does not know, is to achieve global peace through individual peace, through financial freedom. Our whole goal is to become millionaire-minded in thought, in word, and in deed, because we've only got about seven years left before the economy completely upends itself, the middle class completely disappears, and civilization starts to crumble. Now, maybe I sound like Chicken Little, but ask some economists, ask some sociologists what happened in the past when these same sorts of patterns started to rear their ugly heads. Since you guys are on time, I'm going to start you off with a bonus. This is a good time to be text messaging your family and your friends and letting them know that you're about to receive some life-changing information, and they can do the same thing if they wish. If you are not already on Periscope, this is also a good time for you to go in and register for Periscope. It takes about three minutes, and you can sign up with your Twitter account because the Q&A sessions from, this forth, from henceforth on will be handled on Periscope so that we can all kind of share in the community and show love to each other, et cetera, and so forth. My name is Hazik Ali. I'd like to welcome you to Obsessed with Success, Volume 84. Today we're going to focus on coaching. Hi, we're baby. Going to focus on How you doing? How am I doing? Um, today we're going to focus on mentorship and we're going to focus on coaching. And but before we get to that, I'm going to give you guys a slight bonus because you're here on time. And inevitably, you'll get here in the beginning, and there'll only be about 40 or 50 people on the line. And by the time we leave. It's probably like 300, <laughs> and it's like, come on, man, get there on time. So you guys are going to get rewarded for something that I had wanted to cover last week, but I wasn't able to get to. So real quick, grab your pen and pad if you're done text messaging your family and friends. And this is what I want you to write down. I'm going to give you five steps to turning your next website into an online ATM machine. A lot of people can't even answer the question, is their website hurting or helping them? Their awareness isn't even up high enough to know what are good things and bad things to have on your website. Well, if it's done correctly, it's a 24-7 sales force. So I'm going to give you five things to never build a website without. I'm going to give you five things to never, ever, 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 ever build a website without. I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to get a pen and pad. You're going to love this. While everyone's grabbing their pen and pad, this would be a great time to join Dear Millionaire if this is your first time on a call. All you have to do is send at millmind, that's M-I-L-L-M-I-N-D with the at symbol in the beginning, short for millionaire minded, right? At millmind to the number 81010. 
send at millmind in the body of the text message to the number 81010. If you did it correctly, it's going to write you back immediately and ask you for your name. You insert your name, and just like that, you're enrolled in the world's first text message service for personal growth and self-development. Everything from YouTube videos to audio books, everything from quotes to PDFs, everything from ideas to affirmations to help you keep on a straight path. Because as we all know, the devil's government name is distraction. All right, let's begin. The first thing that you never want to have a website without is the basic information. Sounds like a no-brainer, but you'd be surprised. You want to keep the basic information in a really easy-to-find place. That's, you know, contact info. That's an about page that's clear about your purpose, right? Your name. How about your name? Can you make sure you remember to put your name on your website? Sounds ridiculous, I know, but believe it or not, there are some people that forget these simple parts. Number two, social proof. The good um, era, due to all of the different types of technology we have, for you to be able to gather testimonials from insane amounts of different places. Well, social proof means that on your website you should prominently display testimonials from happy customers or praise from experts. So social proof can be testimonials or endorsements, but you never want to have a website without those two because if people see other people like you, they say, well, I'd probably like him too. Number three, you want to gather emails and you want to offer a gift. This can be some kind of discount code. This can be an e-book, but you have to capture these emails. You know, this can be a video where you're giving out some type of expertise. It can be access to a free consultation. Every business doesn't have to sell online. But every business, every website should be generating and collecting leads. Does that make sense? Every website doesn't have to sell online but it's still an ATM machine when you collect those leads because this is, and listen, this is already giving you the price of admission. This one little tip right here. If you have a list of your customers, you have a license to print money. If you're a graphic designer and you know all the people that have bought from you in the past and you have a vacation coming up, millionaires, all you have to do is send an email out to your list and say, hey, Today only, I'm doing half price. You just got to pay in advance. You can cash it in the next month. If you've got a list of 1,000 people, well, let's say you have a list of 2,000 people, and you say it's going to be $50 instead of 200 but today only, you have to buy it. If 1,000 of them do it for the 50 you just made $50,000 in a single email blast. Hope that makes sense to somebody out there. <laughs> Number four. An email follow-up strategy. A month of emails every three to five days, starting with a thank you for signing them up, a welcome. You can include case studies, sales strategies, all types of promo info. I don't have to tell you what to do. I'm just here to make you ask yourself the right questions. If you're a coaching client, I could tell you what to do. <laughs> Number more, more about that later. Number five, a way to track the effectiveness. A, B testing, you know, Google Anal – A, B testing means you can set up even a Facebook-sponsored ad to give you one version, and then the next person sees the next version. And now you're able to go in there and analyze it and see, hey, how many people like this version versus this version? Wow, this version gets this many more clicks, and all I did was change the colors or the font or the picture or the headline, Right? Google Analytics is a free service that allows you to track your effectiveness. Um, so, so Google that. Google Google Analytics. All right? We can't spend too much time on this today. Um, I'm going to give you four quick ideas also as a bonus, four quick email opt-in ideas. Um, you might want to try an e-guide. You know, what I learned, like, 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 like from attending – 
a hundred weddings, like if I'm a wedding photographer, right, an e-guide, right? Um, um, you could do a checklist. Maybe you're a travel agent, you know, eight things you must do before you take a trip to Kenya, right? Number three, insider info, you know, most popular um, um, uh, uh, sauce recipe. Let's say you're a pizza place. You, you give them some type of insider info, you know, four, four things four things you should know before you hire an HVAC person, (laughs) right? Number five, a quiz. Now, quizzes are really cool because it will help you pinpoint the needs of your uh, your audience. Okay, Um, if you're a financial planner of some sort, you know, maybe you ask them, you know, are you saving enough for retirement? And you give them all of these things. So that's just four. I could give you 40. But we got to move on. I just wanted to reward you guys for being on time. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, Okay, so today I promised to talk about mentorship. Mentorship, how to find and utilize a mentor. Millionaire, all your best ideas, strategies, goal setting visions, dreams, et cetera, et cetera, all got you right here. And that's for better or that's for worse, (laughs) right? But this is what most people do. They realize they need advice, but they ask their friends, their neighbors, their coworkers, listen, stop it. Stop asking them for advice. One of my buddies has this quote he says where he always says, if the person you're talking to hasn't lived the life that you want, chances are they can't get you there. Now, I'll elaborate a little bit. Living the life you want can be characterized a number of different ways. This is the way I always sum it up. If they haven't done what you want to do, if they don't know if they aren't who you want to be or if they don't know how to have the things you want to have or feel the way you want to feel, you shouldn't be listening to them. It's those four categories as I see it. So even if it's your parents, they love you. Even if it's your siblings, they love you. But guess what? If they're messing around and accidentally drop some 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 nightshade, some, some kind of poison, in your Kool-Aid, in your, in your coffee, you're still going to die, even though they love you. Some of our friends and family can give us some of the most well-meaning yet horrible advice and outlook known to mankind. So what I decided that I would do with today's call is give you four powerful steps on how to utilize and find mentorship. Number one, determine in advance what you want from a mentor. One of my favorite people, you know, a mentor from afar of mine, Les Brown, a lot of people don't realize his mentor was Norman Vincent Peale, you know, or, or Martin Luther King, his mentor was Howard Thurman, right? I mean, everybody you named as great had a mentor. But what's crazy about Norman Vincent Pill and uh, Dr. Les Brown, what, what, what Les Brown always says um, is that what mentors really do, above all other things, is they help you to see the possibilities. Remember this, millionaires, mentors help you battle opportunity blindness. And they do it two major ways. One, they're a role model, because if you want the results someone has, all you do is model the mentality, the character, and the habits of that person, and you've got to get their results. I mean, it's, it's, a, no-brain, it's, it's a no-brainer, right? You have to get their results if you model their mentality, their character, and their habits. 
Well, that's one way that mentors help you. But the second way is they convey expectation. Ladies and chiefs, listen to me. The worst thing hanging out with the wrong crowd does for you is not give you their opinions. It's not giving you their values. Both of those are equally insidious. Those are those are pretty bad, right? You ask somebody what they think about the weather, and they're giving you a poor person's opinion. Okay, that's pretty bad. I get it. But no, the worst thing that the poor can do for you is give you their expectations. You want to write that down. The worst thing that the poor and the poor-minded can do for you is not give you their values or their opinions because both of those are pretty bad. The worst thing they can do is transmit their expectations into your point of view. Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, to talk about that a little bit, <clears throat> he met Dr. Les Brown. They, they basically only would have a relationship through the phone. They, they, Dr. Norman Vincent Peale mentored Les Brown mostly through phone conversations. But what did he do? He also would quietly open all these doors for him. He helped Les Brown get important speaking engagements. He even helped him raise his fee from $700 to $5,000. He was the first one to tell him that he had the minerals. That, hey, if you keep on speaking from your heart, you got what it takes to reach the tippy top the top three, the top two, the top one percent of speakers in the world. And because Les Brown trusted Dr. Peel, he believed him. So mentors, you need to know in advance what you want from them. And it can be you need them to open some doors. It could be you need a referral to 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 you know some kind of technical expert in your field maybe you just want validation or guidance but you've got to be prepared to ask for specific advice I was just in that, uh, around uh one of my millionaire friends with a buddy of mine and he asked he I mean I just learned the value of this about a week ago He literally asked him um, a question. I'm, I'm not even going to get into it because it will take us too far off the subject. But the millionaire's answer was so simple yet so profound that it changed my life. That one, that one couple sentences changed my financial destiny, and I know this to be true. The right mentor, if you ask the right question, can shave decades from your life in a day. So understand that. Be prepared to ask for specific advice. Anybody that knows me, anybody that considers me a coach, a mentor of theirs, much less if they actually hire me for the deed, listen, they already know. I better not hear of you going to some kind of place where people in your field are going to be, or people that can give you expert advice are going to be, and you not have questions prepared. You better be prepared to ask that advice. And it does two things. It lets you leave there with a feeling of satisfaction and fulfillment, but it also separates you from the mediocre many. It separates you from the savagery of the average and how most of them are going to show up with nothing in their hand but sweat. They're using their head for a hat rack or, a, you know, a wig holder. Smarten up, millionaire. Number two, make your list. What are these different areas that maybe you could use a mentor in? There's all kinds of them, from health to finances to legacy and service. Maybe you want career advice. Maybe you want relationship guidance and direction. Make your list. Number three, do your homework. Do your homework. You can use industry magazines. You can search the Internet. 
You can join one of these trade these trade organizations, you know, for, for, and, and look for executive directors, et cetera, so forth. You can go to trade shows, conventions. You can network with, with fellow entrepreneurs. You can approach other people from your industry or profession. You want to look for mentors who have the well-rounded expertise and experience that you'll need for your journey. And one thing's for sure, one thing's for certain. The truth will begin to repeat itself. You know, as this person, certain names will come up. They'll give you four or five names. You know, as this person, they'll give you a different four or five names, except for two or three people. You know, as this person over here, and they'll give you a different four or five names, except for one person. But that one person that keeps on showing up is starting to look like a contender for the spot of most wanted mentor in your life. The truth will repeat itself. But that's not all to doing your homework, finding your wish list. The next thing that you've got to do is make a specific list to ensure that first conversation is successful. I'll give you an example. Why you'd like them to mentor you. Um, what kind of help you need. And you want to keep this brief, but you want to sound confident. Nobody wants to mentor a loser because if they're successful, they know. One of the adages of this whole coaching game is that it's much easier to take a 7 or an 8 to a 10 than it is a 1 or a 2. Don't be a 1 or a 2. Be a 7 or an 8 or a 9. But be confident. Don't you know it's the most human of traits to want to pass along your wisdom? In one of my particular businesses, you know, network marketing, I mean, me and my friends laugh about it all the time. There are all these gurus with no results. They come into your organization the first day, and they have so much advice. And you're like, relax. Let's get you your first sign-up first. First, let's, let's teach you how to use the back office before you start telling everybody how to do it. <laughs> I could go on and on. That, that could be its own its own thing. Now, here's what you got to remember about mentors. I'm telling you this to boost your confidence when you're talking to them. Sometimes you're bringing more to the table than you think because sometimes that man's kids don't even listen to him. That woman's kids don't even listen. And she talks till she's blue in the face to her daughter, and she won't even listen. But here you are. Now you're about to be a daughter she never had, somebody she can pour this information into before she dies with it. I hope that makes sense to somebody. All you're asking for is a few minutes per month. Listen, some of your potential mentors are going to turn you down, and we need to expect that going into it. Some will, some won't, so what? Who's next? Here's a sample script that you can use to talk to a mentor. Hey, Mr. Ali. No, let me take my name out of it. Because a lot of people say I'm a mentor, but I'm actually more of a coach, and we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> hey, Mr. Johnson. Uh, my name is Michelle. We haven't met yet, and I know you're a busy man, so I'll be brief. I own a small flower business. Over the years, you've done a fantastic job building your business into one of the largest companies in our industry. I'm sure you had some real challenges when you were first starting out. Well, I'm still in those early stages trying to figure everything out. Mr. Johnson, I would really appreciate it if you would consider being my mentor. All that would mean is spending 10 minutes on the phone with me once a month so I could ask you a few questions. I'd really appreciate it. Would you be open to that? Now, if you're a small owner of a business, right, there are so many resources for you. How many of you have heard of SCORE? How many of you have heard of SCORE, the Service Corps of Retired Executives? You know they have an extensive national network with 10,000-plus retired and working volunteers that are all there to just give you counsel, give you advice, 
low-cost workshops, right? And I'm talking about for any type of business that's operating in any type of level, any type of development stage. Let's move on. Number four thing to a mentor is take action on the advice. Take action on your mentor's advice. There is nothing more frustrating. I tell, listen, I tell them, don't be running right, don't be, don't say my name out of your mouth if you're going to run around and be incompetent after I've already given you a solution. Do us both a favor and don't do me any favors, right? Your whole premise. Your whole point of view, your whole purpose when dealing with this mentor has to be to adopt, adapt, and improve. Adopt, adapt, and improve. Don't you you let that man feel like he's wasting his time. Nobody cares if you make a mistake. Human beings are designed to learn from mistakes. What you're going to find is that what people have a problem with is you're making the same mistake over and over again. You can make mistakes over and over again. This is why a keyboard has a delete key and a backspace button. This is why pencils have erasers. You're going to make mistakes over and over and over again. Get used to it. But you can't make the same mistake over and over again. Or Houston, we have a problem. So you adopt, you adapt, and you improve. And then after that, report your progress. That does two things. One, it gives your mentor a sense of pride. And then two, you're able to provide him with some kind of service. That brings us to number five. I know I said four, but this is a bonus. Make the advice valuable. Be prepared to give your mentor something in return. I hope everybody knows this, but mentors only work for service or money. Either you're going to serve them as an apprentice would, or you're going to pay them. It's just that simple. Because the worst thing you can do for that mentor or that coach is shrink their capacity to fulfill their potential. Don't go into it looking to shrink their capacity. Go into it looking to help them expand their capacity. This is the best thing you can do for them. If you're really thankful, Help them expand their capacity. A bunch of ways you can can give them uh, 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 capacity expansion, right? You can keep them updated on industry info. Two, you could give them new opportunities that could benefit, you know, them. Three, you could go forth and help others. How much more? fulfilled and powerful does your mentor feel if you go out and take the things he's taught you and use them to help more people? So I hope that was helpful. That was five quick tips on on utilizing a mentor. Now we're going to get into hiring a personal coach. And before we do that, if you have not joined Dear Billionaire, And this is a good time to join. Text message at Millmind to the number 81010. That's at Millmind, M I L L M I N D, to the number 81010. And that signs you up for Dear Millionaire. Okay, so hiring a person also, before I move on to this one, if you have not joined Periscope yet, this is a good time to join Periscope. You can follow my page at, at Hazik, because that's where we're doing a Q&A session for this particular uh, seminar. Okay. Hiring a personal coach. Bob Nardelli has one of the most powerful quotes on coaching that I've ever read or come across. He's the CEO of Home Depot. His quote is that, I absolutely believe, I absolutely believe that people, unless coached, never reach their maximum capabilities. Millionaires, listen, you'd never expect an athlete to reach the Olympic Games without a world-class coach. You'd never expect a professional football team 
to enter a stadium without having special teams coaches, defensive coaches, an offensive right head coach. But what you need to realize is that today coaching has moved into the business and personal realms to include coaches who may have succeeded in your area of interest and who can help you make the same exact journey. This is one of the best kept secrets of the successful. One of the best kept secrets of the successful is that what they do to accelerate their trip down the path to success is that most, not, I'm talking about 99.9% of them participate or are participating currently in some kind of coaching program. Coaches help you clarify your vision and your goals. They support you through your fears. They keep you focused. They confront your unconscious behaviors and your old programming and patterns, right? Like mentors, they expect you to do your best. They help you live by your values. They show you how to earn more while you're working less. They keep you focused on your core genius, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I remember um, hearing from one of my mentors this whole idea that, like, if Michael Jordan has three coaches, if Tiger Woods has six coaches, what are you doing? And these are some of the best athletes the world has ever seen. What are you doing running around with no co- Like, I'm going to figure it out. How crazy do you sound? How crazy do you sound? Why would you spend your precious time trying to figure it out when somebody else has already figured it out? A wise man learns from his mistakes. The legendary learn from the mistakes of others. So with that said, why does coaching work? First thing you need to know about coaching and this is why I consider myself a coach more than a mentor. If you're going to hire a personal coach, what you need to realize is that they are not for the meek. If you want an executive coach or a life coach, you've got to value unambiguous feedback. Think the same as a therapist where you lie there and then they tell you everything and why it's going to be okay. Coaches are not there to coddle you. They're not there to be your cuddle buddy. If coaches have one thing in common, it's that they're ruthlessly results-oriented. Ruthless compassion. Now, regardless of whether the program's designed to achieve a specific business goal, you know, like maybe you want to increase your real estate listings, or maybe you want to increase your, your prospecting, or whether it's specifically designed to help you simply gain more clarity and progress. A coach can help you. I'm going to give you seven things that a coach can help you with. These are just things to get your juices going. Everybody doesn't need all of these. Some people need all of them. A coach can help you determine your values, your vision, your mission your purpose, and your goals, values, vision, mission, purpose, and goals, right? A coach can help you determine a specific action steps to help you achieve those goals. A good coach can help you sort through opportunities. You know how when you hit that crossroads and you need an outsider perspective? Don't you dare go to somebody who has no idea what you're talking about. Don't get me wrong, you can do what you want, and sometimes that complete novice perspective can just be genius. God might just talk through the person. But reserve the right to veto their opinion. You want to go to a coach. Number four, they can keep you focused on your top priorities. After all, they know them. Number five, they can help you achieve your balance in life while still accomplishing your business or career goals. Number six, 
Number six, they can help you to begin new habits where you expect more of yourself. Because we always say discipline is an illusion. It's really all about your habits and your why. True or true? Well, a coach is going to help you establish new habits. And number seven, and I think this is the most powerful of them all, a coach is going to help you to see where your self-sabotage has been. It's going to help you eradicate self-sabotage. See, as human beings, we tend to only do some of what we're required to do, but most of what we desire to do. Only some of what's required, but most of what we desire, right? Well, a good thing about a coach is that they help you move one into the other. This is what you got to realize. Everybody's just trying to do the best they can with what they got. If you knew better, you would do better. So it's not that people don't want it. It's that they think that what they're doing is going to get them to that. A person that's smoking crack just wants to be happy. It's just that they couldn't see when they first tried it that this isn't where that would lead. Then after a while, the habit kicks in, and it has nothing to do with them making a decision anymore. The decision has been made. They're now addicted. Discipline is an illusion. It's really about the habits. Something else to write down about coaching. I guess if, if, the, uh, if the first was the best-kept secret of the successful, if the second thought was you know talking about the different ways that coaching works, And the third would be there are formats. There are different formats for coaching. Write these down. It can be delivered privately or in groups. Now, most often it's done through regularly scheduled telephone conferences. Now, it can also be done in person as appropriate, but sometimes your coach might not be in the same city as you. Over the course of the sessions, you'll work together with the coach to develop these goals, develop these strategies, develop a plan of action, that is positive, desirable, and realistic. Now, support is often going to be provided in between sessions through email, other media, and occasionally, depending on the coach, you might get coached via structured large group teleconferences in which you listen to this valuable information, but then it's up to you to implement what you've heard. Some coaches will work with you every week. Others will work with you monthly. There's a guy named Dan Sullivan, one of my favorite marketing kings, whose coaching problem whose coaching program only meets once a quarter. But he is legendary for the amount of homework he gives out. It will change your life. So the last thing that we'll get into real quick is how to find a coach. Now, there are literally thousands of coaches available to work with you. I hope everybody's clear on that. There are thousands of coaches available to work with you. They're personal coaches, life coaches, business coaches, relationship coaches, right? Some are industry, some, some are industry specific. Are you talking about dental, you know, real estate, chiropractic, wrestling, right? Some are job specific. You know, they call those executive coaches a lot. Some are interest specific. Interest specific. You know, like maybe you're interested in, in health and wellness. Or maybe you're interested in career transition or strategic planning. Well, obviously, you can find them on the Internet. You can find them in the phone book, right? You can find them in the phone book on the Internet. Or you can just ask around. But what I wanted to leave you guys with is that there are also organizations like Coach U. Clever, right? Or the ICF, that stands for International Coach Federation. Either one of those can help you. But listen, if you go to CoachU.com or CoachFederation.org, or even if you want to, um, if if you like uh, the Dan Sullivan, if you want that once a quarter kind of action, you can go to StrategicCoach.com. But the bottom line is that you want to be prepared to pay. You're going to get what you pay for, though. 
spend untold thousands on the clothes that go on your body? How much are you paying for what goes in your head? It's something to think about, especially since what goes on in the head. Listen, those who think govern those who labor. You guys know the millionaire-minded mantra by now, but I'm going to say it again. Either your mind expands to match your goals. Don't you remember when you were a little kid? Like, like I was just talking about this at a training last night. But don't you remember when you were a little kid and, and you would be like, that's my car. You know, when that Lamborghini would drive by, you'd see that Ferrari in the magazine. Or, or, or for the little girls, you would have a dollhouse and you would tell your mommy, I'm going to buy you a house just like this one, mommy. Isn't it weird? And nobody laughed when I said this last night, which is really funny, you know. It's not. It's really sad. But don't you remember when you would say those types of things like, Mama, I'm going to buy you this house. I'm going to do. Now, some of us would just be happy to move out of our mama's house. Even if we can't buy her one right now, can I just move out? To me, that's hilarious in a tragic kind of way. Because we've been conditioned to expect lack. But a coach or a mentor will pull you out of all of that because either your mind expands to match your goals or your goals are going to shrink to match your mind. This was episode number 84 of Obsessed with Success. Can you believe we have 84 of these at this point? They'll all be up on the website. We are millionaireminded.com and um, you can look for that to go live much sooner than you think. We're putting a lot of the touches on it now and um, that's where you'll be able to buy the Millionaire Minded clothing. You know, we call it entrepreneur equipment. That's where you'll be able to get access to all the past podcasts and um, in general be able to interact in this community that we're building that's going to change the world. It has nothing to do with any specific company. It has nothing to do with any specific job title. It has nothing to do with any specific color, creed, race, nationality, uh, uh, shape, size, right? This is all about the fact that we're going to achieve global peace through individual peace, through financial freedom. So I love you all. Long live your dreams. And I'll see you on Periscope in exactly 12 minutes. At exactly 6.10 p.m., I'll see you guys on Periscope, and we'll do the Q&A session. My Periscope is at Hazik, H-A-Z-I-Q, at Hazik. My Instagram is at Hazik Ali. If you don't have Periscope and you don't have access to Wi-Fi, so you can't be on there. If you ask the questions on either my Facebook or my Instagram, then I will answer the questions. So when you get to Wi-Fi, it'll, it'll be there on Periscope for you. But I love you all. I'll see you either at the Q&A session or I'll see you 7.25 a.m. tomorrow morning for our affirmation call where, again, we're here to live our life by design, not default. I love you all. I'll see you soon. Literally on Periscope. <laughs> all right.